everybody, it's David here. This video is going to go out on my Democratizing XR channel and uh, Marine Digital channel uh, because it's a great use of XR that um, I think uh, you'll see is a fantastic training tool. And of course, it's Marine and Digital. So we're in Marine Verse Cup. Um, this is an application on the Quest Store or the, the Oculus Store. So you can get it from Meta Quest 1, Quest 2 and Quest Pro, I believe, still. And as you can see here, it's a sailing app. It's really targeted at competitive sailing. Um, but you'll see as we get into it, it's more about uh, education as well, which is a really useful thing. And that's what I want to highlight here uh, on the channel. So I'm in just on the boat um, to show you what it's like. So we've got a variety of different boats in the game. This is a larger yacht um, with a mainsail and a jib. Um, we've got these um, kind of 360 environments here and we've got you know shaded water and you can see here there's you know various things like we've got navigational marks there's a dock there there's racing markers there's weather so there's a variety of different things that make it a, a really good environment for uh, training and having fun at sail racing because it's in VR I feel like I'm on this boat and of course you've got all of the kind of things that you need to take care of in, in real life so the sails are obscuring my view here but if I just duck down I can see what's behind this or if I was a crew member sitting out on the side here you know I'd be able to kind of poke my head around the corner and see what's coming in front so these are things which are just simply just impossible if you're doing any kind of uh, gaming experience to learn sailing like on a 2D computer. The boat um, you can grab and interact with the winches and that one over there. Uh, you can steer by grabbing the wheel or you can use, uh, sorry that's the wrong one, the controllers so left and right on that joystick will do our wheel and I can actually control um, the lines here so the the sheets in this case with the joysticks and we can go off like that and our sails are not flapping and we're sailing away. Um, the boats don't go up and down in waves um, that probably would make you feel sick. Um, so far I've not had any motion sickness from this game uh, or, or application I'd call it, it's more than a game because mostly because this boat is effectively static around you. You feel like you're standing on it like a real boat so you have a reference point. And the rest of the world, you know, is gently drifting by. So that's the basics of the game. Oh, we just did attack. I'm going to come out and go into the menu. And I'll talk you through all of the amazing content and things that you can do in this application. So we were just in free sailing, <coughs> which as you can see there is um, go out on the boat and go wherever you want, basically. But if we hit on the home screen here, We've got a whole um, section dedicated to learning, which is really important. I'll come back to that. The main bulk of the game is really racing. Um, you've got some mini games and you've got that free sailing mode. So the bulk of the game is, or uh, the core of the game, I would say, is really about competitive sail racing. And there's a variety of different classes of boats you can sail and you can do a regional championship a world championship, a pro championship, an amateur championship, and I'll get into that in a, in a little bit. Um, just in case you're in the first three minutes of this video, this video will be a bit longer. It's a kind of comprehensive review of why this application is relevant for marine digital and why it's relevant for democratizing uh, XR. Um, now, the really interesting thing about this application is that the developers are developing the educational aspect of this, and this is really important. Um, for a variety of different reasons. So A, sailing's a sport that's relatively inaccessible. You need a sailing boat that can be very expensive. Even for a small dinghy, you know, a good one will cost you a couple of thousand euros or dollars. Uh, you can start on a, a shoestring budget and buy, you know, a, a real old uh, beat up dinghy and that's a good way to start. Um, but effectively it's got high amount of friction because you need the hardware to do this sport and you need access to water so those things make it relatively inaccessible however it's an amazing sport people want to do it so people usually make the effort to go to a lake or the sea um, do sailing lessons they have to rent the boats to do that um, go through the qualifications all of these kind of things and in the worst case you'll go through all that and decide it's not for you but an application like marine verse cup 
can help you to get a taste of sailing, can certainly help you to learn all of the basics, as I'll show you in a moment. And um, as somebody who sails, a, you know, like one time per year, where I charter a, a large boat and go on a regatta, um, it's super important for me because I can use it to refresh my skills. And that's a, a real safety critical thing. And that alone is worth, you know, a, a huge amount of, of monetary value, but it's just worth a lot in terms of having the skills when I go onto that boat after I not sailed for a year. So I'm going to dig into the sailing lessons first, and then I'll do a race. And then I'll show you the replay of a race, which is one of the important features of this application. Um, yeah, you can see it's got multiplayer. This is why we've got the the meta avatars in here. Um, that's an extremely important part of the practicing. We'll see later that we can do multiplayer racing that allows you to practice with other real people. And you've got multi-crew as far as I remember. Um, so you can actually practice with your crew, which is nothing else in the world allows you to do that. But let's have a look at the lessons. So first of all, we've got two sections now. This is a kind of work in progress, as is the whole application. Um, we've got basically as the essential sailing lessons that you need in order to get into the game and start racing. Um, so you can run through these. Um, each of these sailing lessons will take you onto the boat. You'll have um, some overlay or effectively augmented reality overlay on the graphics that will help you to learn which way to sail the boat, where to steer it, and how to adjust the sails. Um, so I'm not going to get into that just now because these are the basic lessons targeted at being able to play the game, so to go into the racing mode. And recently, the developers have added this Nautic Ed uh, training room. So as far as I remember, this is a partner um, dealing with nautical education. And this takes you into a whole separate segment where there's additional content. And I can't remember, but this it could be that this is only accessible if you have the sailing pass. So there's a basic app which you can buy, I think it was about 15 euros in, in Germany, uh, maybe 20. And then I have a sailing pass, which is a subscription that allows me to have access to additional vessel types and maybe this, but I, I can't remember. Um, so two separate parts of the educational part, the basic sailing lessons for the game and then these nautic ed lessons. So the nautic ed lessons are in these three categories. So there's basically the learning the basics. So this is called self-mastery in the game. Navigation rules, extremely important because everybody forgets this and including right-of-way rules. And then this is a uh, work in, in progress, but basically this will be docking, maneuver and getting the feel of a vessel under power. And this obviously needs some physics, um, which are currently in develop, uh, to get that feeling of weight and all of these kind of things. So let's have a quick look at self-mastery. So as you can see here, we've got an augmented reality version of the boat. We can see the, the, the no-go areas of where the wind is coming from. Uh, so you can't sail in that direction. We've got our clock. Um, numbers here so we can say three o'clock all these kind of things and I'm going to click on here so you can see the modules <clears throat> so um, basically we learn about the different uh, sides of the vessels port and starboard the no-go zone which is this red area here tacking jibing uh, using the wind vane which is this thing right up the top which tells us which way we can go um, points of sail and um, how to sail on a particular course. So let's just have a quick look at points of sail and see what this sailing, this lessons are like. Um, so you can see here there's a diagram that's showing me the points of sails. Can't actually read that here in VR, um, but then we've got this large sign here which is saying we're in a beam reach and I need to unpause this. So let's start this. So we're sailing. You can see the no zone here, no go zone here is always shown. And as we steer the boat now, so I will adjust the sails a little bit, we'll see that this close reach um, as we head into the wind will turn into close halt. So I forget myself the name of these things. So this is pointing basically up towards the wind. And then we'll go through the no zone, the attack. So we get the no go zone. Close hold on the other tack. 
I need to adjust my sail here. Close reach, close hold is when we're pointing up close to the wind. We'll probably do about five knots. And as we bear away here, we effectively loosen the sails. I'm not going to give you full sailing instructions here, but we see beam reach. You can see the speed of the boat changing. And then we loosen our sails more where the wind is coming more from behind. Broad reach, which is the fastest point of sailing, as I remember. So basically you learn to adjust your sails to maximize your speed, which is of course important for racing. So yeah, that's how the sailing lessons work and they're very effective because you've got these additional things which you just don't see on a real vessel when you're sailing. So you can see the no-go zone and you can see uh, what's your current, um, current uh, point of sail and you've got your speed here. So pretty useful and you've even got some additional instruments there. So I'm going to go back um, to the main menu. I'm going to show you one more of these training things because uh, I want to highlight how important this is. So navigational rules. Um, these are both extremely important. So first of all, again, many people who go on the water, if you don't own a boat, you typically go a few times per year. Um, and I know that in terms of people who charter sailing boats, they'll go once or twice a year. So they don't have their own boat. Um, it's quite a lot of money to charter a boat, so they'll make it you know, one big summer holiday. And for the first few days of this holiday, it can be very safety critical. People uh, forget the, the rights of way. They forget which uh, buoys indicate left and right coming into harbors, um, what the cardinals mean. So these things are extremely important for safety. And of course, the the give way no no stand on and give way rules so basically your right away rules extremely important when you're going to go and sail a regatta like me so um it does say here that the rules differ around the world please check with your local boating authority however these rules are good enough and general enough to give everybody a good indication of what's going on so let's um have a look at um just one of these i know this is quite quick um, so this is teaching you about when you're entering a harbour, uh, what marks do you use and which side of the boat should these be on? So um, I think the, the description could be a little bit more detailed here, but it's, it's great that this exists in the first place. Um, essentially, you see these red and green markers anywhere there's a channel for a boat to go down, so a safe channel where it's deep enough and there's no rocks. And the rule is when you're going into harbour, so you're returning from sea to harbour, which is always that critical thing, you're trying to get into safety. Um, port or red is on your left of the vessel when you're looking forward and starboard green is on your right. So let's start this exercise. And we'll see we're actually in a motorboat. It says we're returning. Keep the starboard, the green on the right hand side of your vessel when pointing forward. That's important because I can be on this vessel and somebody can say, uh, there's a shark on your left, and I would look here, right? But the person who's pointing this way, there's a shark on your left, would be that side of the vessel. So that's why we use, there's a shark on, let me think about this, the port side, which is that side, right? Um, so sailors do need to learn these things as well as people who fly aircraft um, and anything that's kind of moving through the world. So we can steer by wheel here, and I can speed up just by using my joystick here. So keeping green on the right hand side so I'll speed up can't see the color of that so I slow down I can see you can't see the color but you can see that it's a square on the top and that's another square on the top even before you see the color and that's why you have these symbols that's a triangle so I'm going to keep that on the right and that's a triangle so that's on the right that's a square the next one's a square so even if you can't see the color you can navigate quite effectively by looking at these symbols, which is why you have a color uh, and a symbol for navigational markers. So that's a really good example using the, the fog in the game here. Well you've done. Nice rainbow. You've made it. So we've done that. Uh, you've even got uh, a bit of gamification there. Um, so all of the lessons are like that. They use augmented reality, additional things to help you learn and see what's going on. And you don't get those things if you were to take a boat and go out with an instructor and learn them. The instructor has to tell you. So very useful educational tool here. Um, now, I'm just going to get straight into it. I'm going to go into a race. 
Uh, I've looked at this again, so I've understood a little bit better. So there's quite a lot of options in the array. So first of all, you have different types of vessels. So a catamaran was added uh, recently, very fast. You've got an opti for beginners, for children. Um, I always just use this yacht because it's the closest to what I sail in real life. Um, you've got time trials, which is just you against the clock. Um, multiplayer, again, I said extremely powerful. You can sail with other crew members on the same boat or you can sail by on a boat against other people in multiplayer. Um, and I've not done enough of that in this application yet. Uh, coaching is basically allows you to go back and replay races from the day before and you can do it multiple times until you get um you know until you win so you can figure out all the things you did wrong by just doing replay 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 now these uh this category of race as you can see it's a new race every day so the, the the course is different um the winds are different every day so you don't know what you're going to expect in here so you can't go in knowing what the wind shifts are going to be and uh, what the best start position is going to be you can see i've already done this yacht pro and you only have one attempt to do that per day. So you, so you cannot go back and try uh, to use your knowledge of the course and get a better position. In the other ones, you can. So Yacht Intro is, you've got three attempts per day. Yacht DE, three attempts a day. And Yacht Zone 6, I believe, is European area generally. Um, and you can have three attempts uh, at that. So I need to do one of these ones. Um, Yacht Pro, you can see there, I got seventh position so far. And that will change throughout the day. You'll probably get pushed down that thing. Um, but let's just do the yacht intro and we'll show you what a race is like. So I'm standing up. Um, I'm just going to adjust my... You can actually move the whole boat higher for standing up. Um, and now we can see a timer here to the start down. So there are lessons in here which will explain to you how to do a race start so i've got the feeling this is a good side to start and when it's slightly angled across the line here so to do a race start you basically loiter around the side of the start line and a good start is essentially when you cross that line exactly as the timer goes to zero and ideally with as much boat speed as possible. So you want to be crossing that line with speed um, at zero. So you need to learn your boat, how fast it goes, how it reacts. When you have a crew, this is where it's very important, of course, that your crew is coordinated and slowing the boat down or speeding the boat up as you need. I want to get across to that side of the line. And about 10 seconds in, I want to be on the opposite tack, so I've screwed this up. Seven, six, five, four. So we want boat speed, full speed, full speed, full speed. But not too bad. We're about three seconds behind. Um, so at the moment, you don't see anybody else because I'm probably the first person to do this race today. So you're racing against myself. Um, we're optimizing the speed, so I'm trying to go that way, so I need to go as close to the wind as I can, which is um, shown by this compass here, so I want to maintain about five knots, and this yellow one shows me where the next marker is, so when it's in that, off that red zone, I can effectively turn um, and do my tack towards the boy. So there's a whale I just see. So yeah, like a real sailing boat, You've got things in your face, you've got things in the way. You might not be able to see past the sails all the time, so you need to move your body around. Um, there is, I think, even the effect of weight. I can't remember, so if I position myself around there, I might get a little bit more speed. We are going towards this one, and you see my speed is slowed down, so I need to adjust my sails until we get in the maximum speed here. So do the main first. And then the jib, you should be able to do about nine, just over nine knots. 9.3, I've seen. Yeah, and you do get wind uh, shifts. So unlike the real world where you can see those wind shifts, um, sorry, feel, well, you can see them on the water. 
and you can feel them, um, you need to keep your eye on this, which is an option. You can turn it on um, or uh, keep an eye on your wind indicator above or actually you've got it here as well. So if I see this suddenly, that red zone suddenly moving, I know there's a wind shift. So light blue turquoise patches on the water are light winds. So if you can, you want to avoid those, but you can see this is a huge area, it would have been hard to avoid. Um, again, because I'm talking, I'm not optimizing as best as I could. So we want to sail around the mark and we are tightening our sails to go up onto upwind course now towards the finish line. And again, the finish line, as you can see, is right in the no-go area. So I'm gonna try and keep her about five knots, close hauled. Now, I could tactically tack into this high wind area. You see this will give me a little boost. I just missed it, so it's moving away from the finish line. So now I need to bear away. I probably lost a lot of time by making that poor tactical decision. So I can't tack into the finish line yet. My indicator is saying that I need to come along a little bit more. So there's a slight wind shift, I believe. And now I can tack and probably get that little gust. So adjust my jib, let the boat speed up as quickly as possible. And then we can turn slightly into the wind. So I'm not racing against anybody just now. Sorry about that. That's just because uh, nobody's done this race yet. Um, this will be recorded, and all of the, the well data, done. the statistics about this are recorded on the website. You can go back and analyze them. Um, and you can see here, this is one of the coolest features that I can do a race uh, replay. Unfortunately, there's not going to be much to see because it's just me. Um, I'll speed it up. So you can see me tacking around there. Then I go up here, and this is a great way to analyze you know, what you did wrong in the race. So it was probably the adjustment of sails. And through that patch there, I could have went upwind, maybe not slightly to avoid it. And then here I made that tactical mistake to tack, uh, to try and get into one of these patches of, of uh, high wind. Um, this, when you've got multiple vessels together, is really, really cool feature. And you can have, as far as I remember, when you're doing a multiplayer, you all come into here like a clubhouse where you can laugh each other's mistakes and have discussions. Uh, and that's really important for training as well. So um, one thing I'd say is, you know, the physics in the game are not super, super realistic. You don't have detailed trimming of the sails where you, you trim um, the tightness, how much belly or curvature your sails have got. You don't have that kind of stuff. It would be amazing to have that because it would then become more or less like a full uh, you know, sailing simulator. But it's enough in it to make it a fun game to race against people, and there's enough in it to uh, you know, give you uh, some practice in terms of... of um, I can't grab this. I want my cup. <laughs> um, in terms of uh, sailing, rights of way, racing rules, and all these kind of things. So amazing game. I've got my cup, but somebody else will beat this if somebody else goes into this... Uh, race today and beats that time which is not super good um as we said before as i said before um this application is in development you can just grab this and record something for the developers um there's a discord and there's also their website where uh, we can kind of put in ideas for development um but this is the only sailing application on the quest um and it's very comprehensive. It's very good when you're racing close against other people. Um, give it a try. And if you want to learn how to sail um, or you want to improve your racing skills or just practice for safety before you go back, back on the water, I can highly recommend it. It's going to really be worth your time to um, refresh and revise on some of those navigational things. Um, yeah, that's Marine vs. Cup. That's all from me for now. Cheers. <laughs>